Hello and welcome to my unit on Year 8 Chemistry. We'll be looking at matter. You might ask, be asking, what is matter? Matter pretty much is everything. Anything that has mass and occupies space. So for Year 8, we're thinking everything. So cars, gases, uh, drinks, rings, jewellery. Alright? Now matter comes in states. So what are the states of matter? They are solid, liquid, gas. Think about ice. Ice is water when we heat it up. When we heat up the water, it boils, we get condensation. So that's how we, that's an easy way to think about the three states of matter. So water solids. The molecules that make up solids are arranged in regular repeating patterns. They are held firmly in place but can vibrate within limited area. They're real close together. So look, ice. Ice is a solid. It's hard. Okay, so things we've got hammer gold, and it's hard. The molecules are jam-packed close together. What are liquids? The molecules that make up liquids flow easily around one another. They are kept from flying apart by attractive forces between them. Liquids assume the shape of the container. So look at water, okay? So things like, I've got water, alcohol, vegetable oil, even metals, when we heat them up enough, we can turn them into liquids. So what are gases? The molecules that make up gas fly in all directions at great speeds. They are so far apart that the attractive forces between them are insignificant. So the attractive forces between solids and liquids aren't there anymore. So like carbon dioxide, oxygen, helium, things like that, they're gases. So what causes a change in the state of matter? Well, if we think about ice, well, it's heat, it's temperature. So if we heat it up, it's going to go to a liquid. We cool it down, it's going to turn back, go into a solid. And it's the same with gas. So more heat means what? More heat means more energy. So less heat means less energy. So a gas has more energy than a liquid. A liquid has more energy than a solid. A solid has less energy. So how do we go from solid to a liquid? Think about ice. That's the most common example that we're going to use. Well, a solid to liquid, it melts. All right, we apply heat, so we're applying energy. So the ice melts into water. How do we go from a liquid to a solid? Well, what do we do to water to turn it into ice? We freeze it. And that's the same with most elements. When, when it comes to um, changing their state, we're either heating or cooling it down. How do we go from a liquid to a gas? Well, Evaporation. So again, we're applying heat, turning it into a gas. Going from a gas. So how are we going from a gas to a liquid? Well, that's called condensation. Think about when you go to the service station or you buy a cold drink and you take it out of the fridge, and on the outside of the bottle it goes comes wet because the air around it is cooling down, that it turns into a liquid. How do we go from a solid at a solid to gas and gas to a solid. So we're skipping a step. So we're skipping the li liquid stage. So from solid to gas, that's called sublimate. And from gas to solid, that's desublimate. So how are matter and energy related? If we go back to the beginning, or not the beginning of the video, when I was talking about more heat means more energy, less heat means less energy. Well, we have a, this is called a theory. So what is this theory called? It's called particle theory. Particles have energy. The more energy, we can look at the state that's changing. So what is particle theory? That is the three states of matter. It's the solid, liquids, and gas. So when we ha our particles have more energy, they have more heat, which means they're more likely to be a gas. When we take that energy away, we're changing its state. So it's going to turn into a liquid. We take more energy away by cooling it down, we're turning it into a solid. So what is happening to the particles in each of the states of matter? Well, they're vibrating. But as more energy is added to heat, they vibrate more and change its state. Like I've said, gas particles vibrate the most, and then liquids and solid particles vibrate the least. In solids, the particles are very tightly bonded. Now, they vibrate at all temperatures. There is a temperature, however, that all molecules do not vibrate, and that is absolute zero, which is approximately minus 273 degrees Celsius. Now, 
we have the three states of matter and they can be divided into elements, compounds and mixtures. So elements are things like carbon. Compounds are things like water. All right. And mixtures are things like soft drinks. So matter is broken down into three groups. We have the pure substances, which are like your elements and compounds, and your mixtures. And homogeneous mixtures and hetero heterogeneous mixtures. We're not going to, we're just going to talk about mixtures in general in this video. So what is an element? Elements are the building blocks of matter. Okay, they are all around us. What are elements made up of? They're made up of atoms. And the atoms are made up of a nucleus, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now that's all elements are made up of these. Now the amount of, of protons and neutrons in the nucleus determine what the element is. Carbon is an example of an element. Okay, it has six protons and six neutrons, and it has six electrons. What do we use to organize the elements? You might have seen it in your science class. It's called the periodic table. And the periodic table looks something like this. And it's divided into groups. And you'll see these groups here. Okay, there. And there are our metals. I'm going around here in the blue and the red. The green here are our metalloids. And our blue, everything else on this side here. And this one here are our non-metals. So how elements group? We talked about that. Metals, okay, non-metals, and metalloids. So what are the features of metals? Think about your house. Think about what you have around you. What are metals? What are features of metals? They're solid at room temperature except for mercury, so we call that hardness. They can be polished, we call that luster. They can conduct electricity, so think about all the wires that for all your appliances. They can be beaten up or bent into shapes, so they're malleable. They can be made into wire, so they're ductile. They melt at high temperatures, obviously except for mercury, because it's a liquid at um, room temperature. So what are the features of non-metals? Well, they can't be polished or to shine. They're usually dull or glassy. They're usually brittle. They cannot be bent into shapes. They are poor conductors of electricity. They melt at low temperatures. Many are gases at room temperature. So the key words for non-metals are viscosity, elasticity, and plasticity. Viscosity so it flows like a liquid. So these are the groups. So we've got metals, non-metals. And they're the features that you can see for metals. Metals are generally solid. Non-metals are found in all three states. Non-metals are generally light in weight. Metals are heavy. So if you have a read of the, um, the table, it'll give you an idea more of how metals and non-metals are grouped. So what are metalloids? Well, if we've got metals and non-metals. Well, metalloids are a bit confused. Have features of both metals and non-metals. So silicon is an example of a metalloid. can be polished but does not conduct electricity. And silicon is 14 on the periodic table, which means it's got 14 protons. All right, and there are metalloids there like I highlighted before. So we've talked about elements, but what is a compound then? The atom of one element are bonded very tightly with another element or elements. Okay, so it's more than one element tightly bound together. The elements that make up a compound are completely different substances from the compounds. Okay, so for example, we've got sodium, which is a metal, plus chlorine, which is a very poisonous gas. Put them together and create a compound, sodium chloride, salt. What you use on your food at home and use to cook. So what is a mixture? Mixtures are made up of two or more elements, two or more compounds, or combinations of elements and compounds. Okay, so the substances that make up mixtures can usually be separated from each other. So if we have salt, sodium chloride, which is a compound, and we have water, which is hydrogen and oxygen, which is another compound, and other comp yeah, that's another compound, so that we get seawater. Okay, and we can usually separate them through evaporation or something like that. 
So can compounds and mixtures be separated? Yes, they can. And no, it depends if it's a chemical reaction. And we're going to go into chemical reactions soon. Can be done by passing electricity through the compound, burning the compound, mixing compounds with other chemicals involving a chemical reaction. So we obviously talked a bit about chemical reactions. So what is a chemical reaction? Chemical reactions are a set of processes that lead to a change of chemical substances so with properties so we're changing the substance we're changing its properties so we can change by burning have in examples of chemical reactions so what's the difference between physical and chemical properties of substances because every substance has a physical and a chemical substance chemical properties the properties of most substances fall into two categories physical chemical Physical properties can be observed by the five senses, hearing, touching, smelling, tasting. So examples include color, size, shape, texture, malleability, ductility. So that's the physical properties. There you go, as an example. Chemical properties are those that describe how substances combine with other substances to form new chemicals. Examples are flammability, how easy it burns. Uh, reactivity, how quickly it reacts to create a new substance. Toxicity, how dangerous to your health when, when poisonous substances combine in your body. All right, so physical properties like for an apple, for example, is its size and shape. Its chemical probably tells you what type of chain it undergoes, so when it goes moldy or things like that. So what is a physical change? So we talked about what physical properties are, so what is a physical change? Changing a substance state of matter by either melting, freezing, evaporating, condensating. Changes, changing states are reversible changes. Changing its size and shape of the substance. Okay, so that's a physical change. But not all physical changes can be reversed. We can go between solids and liquids and, and gases, like when we talk about ice. But if, for example, if I drop an egg, it's a physical change, but it can't be reversed. So reversible, non-reversible. So what is a chemical change? Is a change to the chemical makeup of a substance. Bonds between atoms or molecules are broken and new bonds between these particles are formed. Chemical changes are difficult to reverse, unlike physical changes. They can be reversed, but it's very hard. For example, burning paper, okay? Can't be reversed, but it's a chemical change. So if we burn the paper and we add oxygen to it, we got a new substance, smoke and ash and we can't go backwards all right we're changing we've got a completely new substance here we don't have paper anymore we have ash okay so what is a chemical reaction chemical reaction is a chemical change in which a completely new substance is produced so we require chemical reactions to get cement margarine glass makeup we're getting completely new substances we're mixing elements and compounds together to create chemical reactions to get new things so these are those are examples that you see in your daily life how do we know if a chemical reaction has taken place that's a good question so what do we look for to see if a chemical reaction has taken place a precipitate this is a cloudless uh, cloudiness caused by a solid substance appearing in a gas or a liquid Okay, so there's an example there, the picture. So in that liquid, we've got some cloudiness and odor is detected. So something smells. All right, so we can tell a chemical reaction is taking place by the smell. Bubbles appear. Okay, very obvious. There's a change in temperature. So it's either cooling up or it's heating up. Light is emitted or a flame appears. There's a change in color. Okay, so they are all indicators of a chemical reaction. There are things to look for. Thank you for listening.